your, your movie or your documentary, maybe I should say, um, Tito on Ice has its world premiere at the Stockholm Film Festival on Friday. Congratulations. Thank you. How does it feel? Um, I think it's a, it feels like it, it should happen like this <clears throat> because, you know, there is this, uh, this uh, pre-history of me getting the, um, the grant when uh, a Stockholm Film Festival was uh, actually brand new. It was the first... Uh, in the 1990s? Or it was in 1990. 1990. The one kilometer film? Yes. So they gave it to me and uh, they gave me a... It's, it's a, uh, basically a raw stock film rolls amounting to about one kilometer. And why did it take this long for you to actually utilize? Because it's, initially it was for a short film, but Tito and Ice is actually your first feature film in length. Yeah, it's, uh, to me it's not, it's not strange because I'm, to me it's like a continuous work, what I do, um, but uh, I, I switch, I've, I've switched from one media to another. So you've sort of done all the genres? Yes, and then I did comics after And then that, you did comics. Which is really and, difficult. Yeah, and it seems like Tito on Ice is sort of a combination. I mean, it has the impact of comics as well. I mean, you, you travel around the former Yugoslavia with a mummified, life-sized, uh, paper mache doll of the former dictator uh, Tito. Yeah, it's uh, it's also partly it started out as almost as a documentary, and it um, it really starts the whole the whole idea comes from a, a book, a comic or a graphic novel. In this book, um, yeah, Tito is is a part of it, and he's uh, he suddenly appears in a fridge sometime in the early early nineties. And then he disappears again, actually, in the book. But uh, now he pops up again in, in the movie, which um, I started a while after I, I finished the book. The book was done by me and another another uh, comics artist. And that's also a bit, it was a bit peculiar because we had this idea to mix our styles, um, to draw and to write everything together. Not really together, but we were switching the drawings between us and uh, I would do one line, a few lines, give it to him. He would fill in a few more lines, give it back to me. And in the end we had a, a style which was not me and not him, but something really weird in between. Well, the result was Tito on Ice. No, the result was the book, ah, which is called Bosnian book. Flat Dog. Okay. That's the book. But uh, no, the movie started after that, a while after, because we were invited, after the, the book was finished, we were invited to do a kind of tour mm -hmm. in uh, ex-Yugoslavia, um, yeah, just to, to show what our work, because they were, they were interested in it and found it fascinating that we would do a story about their, their region and uh, their, their old uh, marshal, Tito. And because it's a, that's a look from, from another perspective. But, but is that something, I mean, the theme of the movie, you have dictatorship, you have sort of authority. Is, is, was that the intention or did you want to portray how the times have changed when it comes to dictatorship during these 10 or 15 years? Or what was sort of, what's your uh, message with the movie? Um, it's not really, I didn't think in those terms of dictatorship or in the terms of power at all, actually. I think it was more, if, if you can find a theme that interested me, it was more like the theme of, of, uh, of um, identity, individuality and, uh, uh, and projection. And, and also, I mean, when the audience look at the movie, um, is there something that you hope they will bring with them once they've seen the movie? Do, do you wish to have an impact on something or is it, you know, in the eye of the beholder? Well, they're not supposed to be bored. That's the, <laughs> maybe but, the main thing. Yeah. If you can do that, then you you have a good, you, you you've done something uh, that's I think uh, um, you've done something right. Will there be a sequel to follow up the question marks hanging in the air? Mm, you never know. I don't think so. The, okay. the dictators are sort of they're, they're a dying breed. You know, so it's difficult to find. We were thinking of going. Actually, when we were doing the, the book, we were talking 
about doing a sequel to the book, but then we would have we would go to another geographical region. So our first uh, yeah, the first idea was definitely we, we should go to Libya mm. and we should another have Gaddafi, dictator. but he's dead. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Then the, the second the second idea was let's go to Syria, and uh, it, it's kind of. Uh, um, <laughs> It's difficult now. Yeah, and also I'm thinking, like you said, during the production, I think you produced like 50 different sets, and you made I don't know how many different dolls and figures out of papier mache. I mean, mm. how, how long did it, and what what kind of cost did this production have? Did you use more than one kilometer film for uh, it? Well, you do most of that of the Super 8 parts are it's animated. Mm. Um, you don't use up very much. Mm. It's a very economical way of doing film. Uh, in respect of how much how much film you use, so I didn't use up all the film. I still have some actually. Okay.